So at New Life, we talk a lot about starting new churches. But have you ever thought about, like, what is a church? What, what is a church when I talk to people about, I get to help people who are starting new churches. They oftentimes get a very confused look on their face, like, what does that mean? Does it mean, like, you're an architect and you help design church buildings? Does it look, you know, does it mean you go and find like old existing churches that are dying and you kind of take them over and you take their buildings or, you know, does it, is it some franchise model? I don't, I don't get it. What, what is a church? Maybe you thought that too, because for a lot of people, I think a lot of people, what they think of church is they automatically think of a Sunday morning worship service. It's kind of just like, what is church? Church is, um, you know, this place you go on Sunday mornings and people sing some songs and maybe some of your friends are there and you hear somebody talk for a while. It usually teaches you something from scripture, from the Bible, hopefully. Um, and then you go home and that's church. It's a Sunday morning experience. And while worshiping together, oftentimes on Sunday morning is part of church, that's just a little part of it. Church is much bigger than that. Maybe you grew up in Sunday school and you learned the song. I don't remember if I didn't even do it right, but it's like, here's the church. It's got the steeple, something or something about, look, all the people. Okay, it's like that. Okay, right? We were taught as kids, if you were raised in Sunday school, that church isn't the building, but it's the people. It's this network of relationships. It's a spiritual family. You know, if I had to define what a church, <clears throat> what a church is in a simple definition, I would do it this way. This isn't something I came up with. Some of our partners in ministry came up with it. They say this, a church is a spiritual family growing in surrendered obedience to all the teachings of Jesus Christ who gather together regularly under biblically recognized leadership for the purpose of fulfilling the great commission, meaning making disciples, helping other people learn to follow Jesus with a great commandment heart to love God, to love other people. So uh, a church is a spiritual family that's on mission together. There's leadership, there's guidance, there's vision for where God is taking us as a community of people. And so it's much bigger. It's much bigger than a Sunday morning. Sunday morning is just part of helping us fulfill the, the mission of worshiping God and loving him and hopefully helping us make disciples. I love what 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4 says about us as a church. Apostle Peter, inspired by the Holy Spirit, says, As you come to him, the living stone, talking about Jesus, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And so Peter's given us a picture, a word picture of, of what the church is, and he he describes it in language like as if it's similar to the temple in Jerusalem. Peter had spent a lot of time in Jerusalem. He had seen all these big stones that were put together. They were even building the temple. They were continuing to build and add on to the temple during, Peter, during Peter's lifetime. So I'm thinking he's got this you know, idea, this picture that he says, that's a metaphor for what God's doing with us. Every one of us has a part to play. And, and we're like a stone, not just a, an old stone that can't talk, that, that, you know, that just stays here. No, we get to move around. And, but he's going he's gonna to build us together, put us on top of one another. We're going we're gonna to rub shoulders with one another, encourage one another, build each other up as a spiritual temple who makes spiritual sacrifices. And so we don't go to some dusty old building to offer sacrifices to God, but we worship God on Sunday mornings and then we worship him throughout the week. How, how do we worship him? One way is through being a holy priesthood, Peter says. We're to be a holy priesthood, a set-apart priesthood, meaning by the way that we live, by the way that we talk, we're set apart from the world around us. We don't just blend in with the culture around us. People can see there's something different about those people. What is it? Oh, it's, well, they're members of, of New Life Christian Church throughout they're a different group. They're set apart. They're crazy, maybe. They're crazy about Jesus. But it also says we're to be not only holy, set apart, but a priest. And what do priests do? Priests bridge the gap between God and man. They represent God to man and man to God. And that's what we get to be, the priest, the bridge to our community to help people connect with God, to discover him in fresh and new ways. 
And so my question is, you know, if you go to New Life or you go to another church, why are you a part of that spiritual family? Why are you part of that spiritual community? You know, a lot of people, they say, I'm a part of this church because of a building, right? There's some building that they're just a, a, attracted to, you know, it's where they got married. It's where their, you know, kids got baptized or it's where, you know, it's like the end zone. It's this great, cool venue with a sports complex. So I go there because of a building or some people say I go there because of, you know, the, the preacher and he's like a really great speaker or I go there because that's where my friends are, you know, that's where my friends are. Or I go there because they got really good ministries and programs and unfortunately though, if you go to a church, if you decide what church to go to based upon you know, a preacher or the building, the venue that you meet on Sunday mornings or a particular program or because your friends are there. All of those things will come and go like COVID showed us that. COVID show all of those things were taken away from us. But what will keep you at a church long term ought to be the mission of the church, the vision of that church to make disciples of all nations to reach your community, to reduce the lostness of your city together as a family. See, all these things will come and go. Those, those, the preacher, the building, okay, programs, your friends, okay, people in the church will come and go. But what can be consistent is that calling, that sense of that we're on this mission together. And whether my friends are here or not, whether the preacher that I love is preacher or not, whether the building, okay, is the building that I love, we're on this mission together. And that should be the thing that draws you there. See, when Jesus, when he made disciples, he, you know, attracted people through kind of some cool things, kind of like some ways churches attract people through programs, through these really cool things, through a personality, like really great preacher. It's not bad to attract people that way. Jesus healed people. He fed people. He did miracles and people were attracted to him. And yet when he had a really hard teaching, when he called people to radical discipleship, a lot of people left. A lot of people were like, oh, you're not feeding us anymore? Then we're gone. And so who was there left in the upper room after Jesus was crucified? After Jesus, after their leader, their main leader wasn't even with them in person anymore. It was 120 disciples who were fully devoted to the mission that he had given them. And, and so I hope that if, if you're a member of New Life or you're a member in another local church, that you say, I want to be part of those people in the upper room. I want to, pe- I want to be a people that are here because of the mission of this church, because of the vision of this church. And yes, we might move buildings or the, the pastor may you know retire or my friends might move because of their career. But I'm not here because of that. I'm here because we're making disciples. We're reaching our city. And I want to be a part of that. I want to be a living stone here who is helping building up this local body of Christ. And so I I just hope you would think about why do you attach yourself to your local church? Yes, hopefully you, you will benefit from it yourself and other people will be building you up. But most importantly, I pray that it's because you know that you have a role and a mission that's going to change and shape eternity. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we get to be part of the greatest mission of all time, that we get to be a holy priesthood representing you to God, representing you to other people, to people in our community, God. God, I I just ask that you would help us to be faithful stewards of the mission that you have given us to make disciples of all nations. Pray that our our preferences to, you know, what we want to see happen at church would not be about us, but we'd be about bringing you glory and helping other people experience you. We love you. We praise you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.